Hello, Great River School families. I'm here to give just a short overview of um, what the uh, survey results from last week are starting to tell us and what we're gonna do with them. Um, so as a reminder, as you can see on the screen here, um, I'm just showing you the uh, greatriverschool.org forward slash return uh, website page uh, and reminding us all that the state of Minnesota has guided schools to use local data make local decisions and reevaluate. And what we're doing right now is going through a reevaluation. Um, and so we had given you these uh, reevaluation dates to anticipate. And so we're approaching our first approximate date. So October 19th through 23rd, we'll be gathering up uh, working groups and then working with an advisory group um, that involves families, that involves students, that involves people who are experiencing on-site experiences at the Resource Center um, and distance learning experiences, and our staff and faculty and talking about what's the medical data telling us, what is the public health data telling us, and then uh, what are families and students saying about their learning. Um, so specifically, uh, our early results, uh, as we talk about the survey results and next steps and community decisions here, um, our elementary survey results, uh, as I'm showing on the screen here, um, and this is just a summary, we'll share more next week, but show that uh, split in about thirds, um, our elementary community in terms of a preferred learning model has chosen, um, again, in thirds between distance, hybrid, and in-person. And um, we asked two main questions last week. And one was, what's your preferred learning model? And the other was, if we move to do more face-to-face, -face, would you attend physically? And what I see here that's telling um, is that uh, more folks um, answered they would not attend physically yet. Um, and even the folks who said that they would be coming in hybrid in person, in the comments I heard from about 10% uh, um, of that total block over there on the left of pink and yellow, um, about 10% of those folks even said uh, they have caveats and they want to make sure they would attend in person, but they need to see health data improve or stay stable. Um, and I'll talk about health data more in a minute. But the general pattern here is that a lot of the folks who want more in-person and, and hybrid experiences are lower elementary families um, and students. Um, and specifically, we understand that and we, we know why. Um, so as we take this data in, we know that even if we went back to school in person right now, fully half of our families uh, approximately here would still want a distance learning option as their chosen model. Um, secondly, uh, we are looking for ways to really set clear criteria so that we can all be looking and knowing what to expect about when, if, and how we can go back more in person. Um, however, uh, I'll talk about that medical data in just a sec. Here are the adolescent survey results, and again, more adolescent students and families here replying that distance is their chosen model, really lines up with the number of students who want to stay home. And between those students who do want to come in person in some way right now, um, Again, most of those students uh, wanting hybrid, three out of five wanting hybrid. Um, and so as we look at the health data, I just want to remind everybody every Tuesday evening, uh, we look at this data from 6 to 7 p.m. But I'll just give a quick overview right now. And um, specifically, what I want to point out is that um, we're using the case rates per 10,000. And then also the test positivity rate is two leading indicators. Um, the, the parameters set forward by the state do indicate that uh, the case rate per 10,000 would give us a standard of what the most aggressive learning model we could be in in terms of being in person would be. Um, and as I scroll down here, I just want to point out that over the last two weeks, um, a new data coming out uh, as of today that we haven't gotten into this chart yet, uh, does show that case positivity rates are above 5% in most of the seven metro counties. And that's important. If a case rate is below 5% in terms of the test positivity rate, um, that, that indicates more control over the spread of the virus. Uh, test positivity rates over 5% indicate what uh, epidemiologists would call an uncontrolled spread. And then if we see this go, say, above 10%, that would be very high, and we could expect that numbers would climb very quickly in terms of uh, cases reported. Um, and then we look at cases per 10,000. Again, this is uh, a lagging indicator, means that it says what was happening really accurately two weeks ago and informs what we can choose to do next. Um, but even here we see uh, that after a few weeks between early August and mid-September um, of cases declining and really showing uh, low numbers, we'd like to see low teens and near 10 to hold in order to make uh, more in-person decisions. What we do see is that cases are climbing in counties. And we, so we, we really take into account that we want to be uh, 
using this data to make good decisions. And down here, um, just a quick chart, uh, we wanna see these case rates per 10,000 going down and to the right in every one of our seven counties. And what we've seen over the last two weeks is uh, a spike up. Um, so hopefully we see those go down. And again, next week we'll be meeting with groups. Um, those, those working groups, uh, as a reminder to you all, um, involved uh, health and safety, communication, student support, and curriculum planning. Um, I'll be reconvening those groups uh, next week to talk about the goals that we had set and, and if we're succeeding and where we can improve. And then we'll be doing that quarterly throughout the year. Um, so thank you. Thank you for watching and uh, hope you're having uh, a worthwhile uh, chili MEA break. Bye now.